How powerful are many PCs allowed to be? When does it stop making sense? I don't care. I'm just glad that we have the HX100G from Mini's forum. This is a Ryzen 7 powered mini PC and you know the mini PC term is getting stretched because there are ITX PCs that are around the same side but let's go through some of these specs and then we're going to get serious about this and I'm going to talk about replacing one of my desktop rigs with this. Can it do it? Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not going to be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25. Hit apply. And that price comes down to $17.19. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices for Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home. Windows 11, you can buy it directly. Windows 11 Home. And we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here. Go to your user center. Click on My Purchase Orders. Just View, Keys, and Codes. Then you can just copy and paste your key. Hit Start. Type Activate. Click on Activation Settings. Paste it in there. Click on Next and you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. So what we're gonna do in this video is talk about what makes this special other than the fact that it has a dedicated GPU, which will instantly make it much faster for gaming than any of the other mini PCs that have the integrated graphics chips, which, you know, if you've got an AMD, it's pretty good, but the dedicated is a lot faster. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is something a little bit personal because, you know, I've been wanting to move for a while and I've got a couple of big rigs. The one that I'm using right now to capture everything is a 5950X. It's a full on big computer and I can't take all these computers with me. So can I replace that entire computer with this Minis Forum Mini PC? That's the main question that I'm going to be asking while I'm doing the testing. And then we'll find out at the end and I'll, I'll replace my computer and then sell my old one if, if that's the case with this. So stay tuned to figure out, you know, what I decide. I haven't decided yet because I haven't done all the testing. First off, let's go through all the specifications. It's got the Ryzen 7 7840 HS. It's eight cores, 16 threads. One other thing you might notice is, hey, there's a Ryzen 7 and a Ryzen 9. Just note that this Ryzen 7 that I have right here, the Ryzen 7 7840 HS is faster than this Ryzen 9. This is the newer generation and um, it's gonna have the same cores, basically same threads, but it's a little bit faster with the frequency. So you got a frequency advantage on this one and that's gonna give it an edge. So don't be confused with the Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9 thing. Now for the GPU, we have an AMD Radeon RX 6650M. Now both of these are mobile parts put into this. You can't have something this small with full size parts. That would just be, um, you could, it'd be too hot and crazy, but yeah. So the GPU has eight gigabytes of GTDR6. Above and beyond that, this takes DDR5. You can get it in three different flavors. The one we're looking at has a one terabyte NVMe drive. And then we have two sticks of DDR5, uh, making 32 gigabytes in total. Let's measure it. 21 centimeters by 21 centimeters by uh, eight uh, centimeters. At least that's what I'm measuring right here, which is if you're doing it in inches, it's eight, and about eight and a two. Eight and two uh, pieces of bread. I don't know how the people. I think in, um, oh yeah, that's right. In America, everyone measures things by time. So it's about a minute and a half across by a minute and a half and then 30 seconds tall. So it's 30, so every 30 seconds if you turn it on its side. All right, let's take a look at the front. We've got USB 3.2 type A, then we've got speakers and a microphone input right there. And then below that we have USB type C at 3.2 Gen 1, according to their website. I'm going to gripe right here. We've got two ports. I would much prefer this to be just like a microphone combo port with the head microphone headphone combo port in the front. And then the speaker port that should be in the back, in my opinion, because I always use a just regular speaker hookup. I don't have I don't use like HDMI audio or DisplayPort audio or whatever. And now I'm tempted to go buy a USB sound card so I can plug it into the back and have audio that way. I, I don't know why so many mini PCs, and this is a much bigger mini PC, I don't know why they're, they're skipping the audio port on the back in favor of one on the front. There's a lot of reasons why I prefer audio port to HDMI, but if you're using audio over HDMI, you're fine. But if you're someone who, and if well, also if you're going to be plugging your headphones straight into the front, you're fine. But if you have a speaker set up, you're gonna to have to have a cord in the front and a cord in the back for all the other stuff. So, you know, it's just, I guess I'll run a cord around, it'll look goofy, but I'm picky about that. Let's take a look at the back. On the top, that's 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And then we have a USB 
that's type A Gen 3.2, and I believe that's a Gen 2. We've also got two below that, those are 3.2 Gen 1. And then you can see right there, we've got two HDMI and two USB 4. Now the USB 4, those can do 8K 60 Hertz, both of them. And then the HDMI, those can do 4K 60 Hertz. You can have them all running at the same time for four monitors. The HDMI are HDMI 2.1, by the way. And then the USB 4 ports are USB 4. <laughs> They're going to be display port once you plug them up. So you might have noticed it's got a cool little stand here that I've attached to the bottom. I haven't taken the plastic off, but it does have some nice rubber texture here so you can sit it down and it won't slide around and everything. It looks really cool. But it's also maybe going to do a little bit when it comes to uh, allowing the air to fro fro free. Otherwise, we do have a couple of rubber feet so you can lay it down on the desk like a like this. Just plop. Hey, how you doing? It's also 70% carbon fiber and 30% resin. Now let's talk just a second about the thermal system because it's special. It's special because I could barely hear it. That's why it's special. Even when I was running Ada 64. For a long time i'll show you that in just a second but we got seven heat pipes on the inside and two fans uh, and then an array of different fins and whatnot but it keeps it really nice and cool opening up the other side you do have to remove the the rubber feet which was a little bit whatever it's got some they got some sticky stuff and then below that there's four screws then you got to pop off the side panel which was not easy but it can be done you have to really get under there I was able to use a tiny flathead screwdriver to pry it open and undo all the plastic snaps and then I was able to lift it off uh, and then you have to remove a metal shield so it's got some structural stability there and once you remove that then you can look under the hood and see what we've got there so right now this one has the one terabyte m.2 installed there's a spot where you can install another one you see there's also our um, have our wi-fi plugged in right there it's got wi-fi 6. then we also have access to our ram and this ram has some nice heat spreaders on it to keep things nice and cool because that is you know of course ddr5 so i'm going to say it's not the easiest system i've ever taken apart nowhere near as easy as some of the other ones you know how often are you going to be taking this thing apart every day take it apart once add a new m.2 close it up you're good to go. All right, I think you have an idea of what we're working with now, but let's jump into the benchmarks and just see how this does in some canned benchmarks and then we'll get into the gaming stuff. All right, let's check out Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, we're running at 1080p and we have it on ultra and we're getting between 60 and 80 FPS. Let's go ahead and do a test right here. And it's running so well. Now to be fair, I am underground, but there's a lot of stuff going on here. Maybe not quite as much as when you're in the middle of a city. Expect maybe 20 FPS lower than this when you're in the middle of a city. Let's go down here with some more geometry, maybe the big tree and all that. And let's see if I can crank this up to 1440p because I thought this was going to be like a high quality 1080p situation. But this is really a 4K. I mean, really, a, you probably could play it on 4K if you're okay with like 30 FPS. But let's go ahead and do different resolution here. Crack, what are you doing wearing that goofy ass thing? So 1440p is how I would play this game. And I'm playing on Ultra. There's a few settings I normally like to go in and turn down, but this will give you an idea that you you know you can totally play this game. 1440p on Ultra settings. If you want to crank it up to 4K, let's try that. Why not? 4K. Absolutely. Yes. And we've got our FSR turned off, just so you know. You can turn this on, but I prefer it off if I can get away with it. All right, so we're down to 25 FPS on 4K. So what I would probably do is you have a couple different options here. We can turn on FSR and put it on, let's try quality and see how that, how that works. So FSR on quality, if you're determined to keep it on ultra and it looks pretty good. They've done a pretty good job. Uh, things are not quite as blurry like around the eyes and stuff as I expected it to be because we're playing 4K. So if you really want to play 4K on this, this is playable for a game like this. 40 FPS is totally fine. So you can if you want to. This is Ultra again. I would probably play this on high with FSR off. Cyberpunk 1080p Ultra settings. I've turned off a couple of the settings like motion blur because I don't like them, but it's not really going to affect the frame rate. And here's what we got. You can see average 58.87. Minimum was 45.71. Let's crank it up a little bit. I mean, we're already running on ultra. All right, now it's time to crank it up to 1440p. We're gonna leave it on ultra with ray tracing off. 
and uh, see how this goes, shall we? Should also note that I do keep a few things turned off. Chromatic aberrations is garbage. Don't like lens flares, and I hate motion blur. So I'm keeping those off. And then video over here, just like that. Well, yes, indeed. I think 1440p Ultra is a go with Cyberpunk on this tiny PC. And as you can see there, our average FPS was 42.51. Uh, the minimum never dropped below 34.68, so basically 35. I think that's pretty good when you consider we're running it on Ultra. And I also have all my, you know, DLSS off, but I do have AMD FSR 2.1 enabled which looks really good with the quality setting on this, in my opinion. It looks almost as good as DLSS, maybe not quite. I haven't really done a one-to-one -one comparison, but it's it keeps everything smoothly playable, and I like that. I would probably play it on high and maybe turn that off and see how it looks, but this will just show you how it's running. All right, let's hop into Alan Wake, shall we? See how it's running? Alan Wake 2, it's running pretty good. So we're getting 44 FPS. Let's get outside. And uh, yeah, this is very playable because it's nice and smooth. Let me show you the settings that we're running at right now. So we're running a lot of stuff on normal. Let me get over to graphics, where are we? So I'm running at the native resolution with FSR2. And then if we scroll on down, motion blur is off. And here's my other, other settings. So that's about where I would keep it for this game. And of course we have ray tracing turned off. It's not going to rival like a 4090 or whatever, but come on. Someone's shooting guns outside. Can you all hear it? Okay, it feels very smooth. I really like the way the lighting looks in here. So let's go in and get a cup of coffee, shall we? I could use a cup of coffee right now. We're trying Tears of the Kingdom right now, and I've got it at native resolution. I'm using SMAA to do some anti-aliasing. So this is not just your standard... Uh, no settings, I guess. And it's running really well. Okay, we're back at it. And this time, I decided to push it a little bit farther. Take a look at that. We're running at double resolution, so 2x resolution. And um, right now, I'm also running a shadow fix and an FPS++ mod, which will unlock the FPS to allow us to go up to 60. And yes, we're playing at double resolution. A couple stutters there as shaders build. But once your shader cache gets built, can I get you? Oh, can't pick it up. Uh, once your shader cache gets built, you're going to be doing just fine. This is running beautifully. So your your switch emulation is going to be awesome on this PC, even at 2x resolution, as you can see here with Tears of the Kingdom. I still haven't played this game yet. I need more time. Maybe if I stop making videos on many PCs long enough to play a game, that would be nice. What's going on? Oh, it's you. Superposition, 1080p, high. And you can see there we got a 9133 score. If you're playing along at home with your big desktop rig, does it compare to this tiny mini PC with a graphics card? Average was 68, so let's, let's go ahead and crank it up one time. We got it on high. Let's just do this on extreme. That's more like it. A moderate amount of punishment. We're in the 30s now. So we'll see how this extreme benchmark does at 1080p. That's more like it. Get some punishment going here. So on the extreme setting on 1080p, it looks beautiful. But once everything goes crazy, we drop down to a minimum of 25.02. Final score, 41.42. Now, most of the other mini PCs I test can barely run this on low or medium. So this one is extremely good on high and pretty good on extreme. But that'll give you an idea of just how much power you have going, uh, you know, with this CPU and GPU combo right here. All right, let's talk about these canned benchmarks. Hey, it's beaten the Threadripper 1950X. Finally, a small PC that can beat it. And there's our score up top, 16,395 for the multi-core score. Next up, we're going to do Geekbench. So I've got two Geekbench scores here for the CPU and also the OpenCL score for the GPU. You can see our single core is 2697 and our multi-core is 13,528. If you're playing along at home, well, by all means, check your scores. I'm, I'm curious to know if you've got like a, a rig that's a few years old, does this little PC compare to your new rig or your older rig, I guess, with its dedicated graphics and all that. I'm scrolling down through here. You can pause on anything you want to see, you know, compare your score to this one. So 
it's all up to you. Next up, we've got our OpenCL score. 72,129 is our score there. And I'll scroll down again so you can see these results. Compare them to what you got going on at home. Let's stress this thing, shall we? I'm gonna leave this on for 15 minutes and we'll see how warm it gets. I'll also check the, uh, it's extremely quiet. Okay, after about 15 minutes, well, as of, as of now, just about 16 minutes, it's not getting any hotter than 70. And whenever it does, it just magically comes back down. This is incredibly quiet as well. So let's do a little test here. Now just hanging out in the room with nothing going on. Let's see here. It's a mess in here because I'm moving stuff around. All right, this is with nothing going on. It's kind of a noisy room because there's servers and stuff. All right, I put it about a foot away from the unit itself and did another test. This is what I got right here, 71.3. So again, I'll turn the hold off and just let it sit room in the room. It's louder above my desk than it is below my desk. That's ridiculous because it's below the desk in the floor right now. So I'm just going to say it's not really very discernible when the fans are, are ramping up. It's very quiet. Got some wattage going through this thing, through the GPU. Let's take a look at that, and then I'll show you the wattage. Where's the CPU wattage? Okay, so that makes sense. This is a uh, much more powerful, literally, unit. There's more power going through this unit than there are through the typical mini PCs. And I've seen some other, uh, you know, PCs with similar parts that don't have anywhere near as much power. So they've got a lot of power, but they've also got adequate cooling, as you can see from the Ada 64 test right here. And that's going to mean more speed for you. Weak. And uh, this background image is too bright and everything, right? That's better. <laughs> That's much better. It's been a week, and uh, here I am using this machine. I do have one gripe. It came with Windows 11 Home, and that's for someone like me who needs to do advanced networking stuff. That's not okay. I feel like a powerful system like this should never come with Windows 11 Home. So I upgraded to Pro using one of the Who keys, and it worked just fine. So luckily that was okay. But yeah, I've already got all my stuff installed. There we go. Now we can see the whole screen. Got my music player installed. Um, I've got my fancy start menu installed down here. If you want to see all the programs I've put on this after one week, not a lot. So yeah, and it also works with some game dev, depending on what you're doing. If I decide to stream again, it'll probably be some game dev type stuff. And I'll be using this machine and my giant 5950X is going to be sold. But I'm also downsizing, trying to get rid of just about all my big stuff, except for my main rig in case I am somehow able to move to Asia. We'll see. But yeah, this is my new rig. It's awesome. And it's so quiet. It's like, this room is much quieter now that my big rig is gone, and this is the only rig in the room. I'm going to need a couple of, of uh, you know, like USB hubs, but I think I can do it with one good USB hub that has like seven or eight different ports for my other webcams and stuff. We can extend this a little bit. Maybe I'll use a USB 4 hub to get all kinds of stuff. Uh, because I only need three monitors. So yeah, I'm going to replace my big rig with this. It's not quite as fast when you compare it to the big crazy CPUs, but those use way more power. This entire unit, when it's fully powered up, will use like 120 watts or 119 watts, 119.7. Let's just, let's just be completely accurate here. Um, it comes with a big power brick in the box, so you'll, you'll need that. But yeah, I think it'll be just fine for what I'm doing right here. I don't play a ton of ridiculous games on this machine. I have another machine for that. I'm mostly capturing. If I'm going to do some streaming, I'll do it here. Um, and then testing. You know, sometimes I'll play a game on this machine, but it's it's rare. So I think it'll do a, a great job for everything you see right here. Um, probably should have switched a long time ago. That big This big computer on the floor has just not really been getting a lot of use because I have another computer in the other room that's a little bit faster. Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about, because once you start getting to something that's that's this size, if you plan to buy this and go from place to place, or you're traveling, um, or you want to take it to a friend's house or a LAN party, then this is amazing. But for the exact same amount of money, what could you do if you decided to just say, oh, okay, I've got some extra room, I don't need a tiny PC, I can get like a regular size PC. So I decided to be goofy and put together a list of parts here. I actually just modified one of the you know, one of the recommended builds. Uh, this is a little bit more money. So for, it's going to be cheaper to get this, but so here's the deal. This is going to be a little bit faster because it's got a full-size graphics card. I went with the same graphics card 
and then it's also got a Ryzen 5 7600X. Now, this doesn't look like it's gonna be faster on paper, but remember, this is a regular part, not a laptop part. It has twice as much cache. So what does that mean? Well, the extra cache makes a huge difference, and in most benchmarks, that one's nine to 15% faster. So you can get a slightly faster system for around the same amount of money. I would probably, you okay, honestly, you're gonna have to cut some corners here. So you're gonna have to go down to a smaller graphics card. So yeah. Go down to a smaller graphics card, so you'll get very similar performance. The other difference is, is this is going to be much easier to upgrade. It's going to use a lot more power, too. So there's arguments on both sides, really, uh, as far as like which one to use. Because this, it's kind of hard to beat for the money, even when you build your own system. But if you build your own system, you can potentially get a tiny bit more performance and the ability to upgrade. And, you know, it's all about what you need. And for me, this is going to meet my needs because I want to, you know, have a smaller computer, clear up some space here, um, and also prepare to possibly move if I'm able to figure out a way to get out of the USA, then this will be much easier to take with me. So, yeah, and it's so stupid fast that I don't think I'm even going to, I'm not even going to notice it. I'm not doing any 5950X stuff that couldn't be done with this computer right here. So, yeah. Anyway, I think I've talked enough. Right now on Epic Pants, we've got this mother membrane keyboard. I'm still keeping this on half price because I've only got a few boxes of this left and it's another thing I don't want to take with me. But I love this keyboard. I'm keeping a box for myself because it's the best membrane keyboard I've ever used. I'm not gonna, I shouldn't, shouldn't sell this too hard because it's it's $19. That's, that's, that's it right there. But these keys feel really nice and poppy to me. You've got several different colors you can cycle through. And um, also it's water resistant as you can see here from our wonderful uh, photo that we have, yes. Anyway, that's it. Head over to epicpants.com, grab that, um, and then be sure to check out Manny's forum. Let me know, are you gonna get one of these? Do you want one of these? What are you gonna do with it? Is it just, is it just too crazy? <laughs> is that a thing? All right, I'll see you next time.